we're going to try to find the radius of a star. That's why I put this one. Sir, what's the difference between a diamond and a radius? A radius, sir. It's <laughs> cute. All right, so how can you find the radius of a star? Well, we don't need any new equations. We can actually use what we've already learned. If you remember Wien's uh, displacement law, it says uh, it's relating black bodies and the peak wavelength and the uh, surface temperature, so the black body temperature. And it goes like this. It's lambda max times t equals 2.90 times 10 to the minus 3. So that's one thing. So we can use lambda basically to tell us t, the surface temperature. And then we have Stefan Boltzmann's law, which says that the luminosity equals uh, sigma times a t to the fourth. But the key thing is this one. What's this A? This A is the surface area of a sphere. And this is something I need you to know. Okay, so I want you to know that A equals 4 pi r squared. So it's like the area of a circle, except you throw a 4 in front of it. That's the surface area of a sphere. So that means, and we can put this together, we can say, oh, that means that L then equals, let's see, it's going to be sigma times 4 pi r squared. But we normally put the 4 pi r squared before it. So if it makes sense, I'm going to put the A before. So I'll say it's 4 pi r squared, then sigma, then t to the fourth. So that means this right here is the equation then that I could then use to solve for r. And that's the key. That's how you can find because r is going to be the radius of your star. So what I want you to, to know, oh, by the way, we have the luminosity in watts. We have the radius of the star in meters. We have sigma, which is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. You look it up. And t is the surface temperature of the star, which maybe you needed from here. But I need you to know how to find the surface area of a sphere, okay? It's 4 pi r squared. You need to know this. Let's do an example with the star Sirius. And by the way, Sirius uh, A, is, it's actually a binary star. Sirius A is the brightest one. And actually, uh, it's the brightest star in the sky. And it has a luminosity of 25.4 L with this little symbol. Remember what that means? That's the luminosity of the sun. And then we're told, oh, thank goodness, okay, luminosity of the sun is equal to this value. So 3.85 times 10 to the 26 watts. So we're also told that Sirius A has a peak wavelength of 291 nanometers. Watch out for nanometers. Those aren't just meters. Those are 10 to the minus 9. And, okay, well, the question is for part A, what's the surface temperature? Well, how do we find temperature from a peak wavelength? We use Wien's displacement law. So this uh, lambda max times T equals 2.90 times 10 to the minus 3. I'm just going to use that. So let's solve for t first of all. We'll get t by itself, so it's just going to be equal to 2.90 times 10 to the minus 3. All that divided by, let's see, what do I have to divide by? Lambda max, uh, which in this case right here is 291, but it's nanometers, so it's times 10 to the minus 9. Okay, I can use my calculator for this. So I'll get it out, and also kick in my fraction. I want 2.90 times 10 to the minus 3. All that divided by 291 times 10 to the minus 9. I end up with an answer of 9965 point, you know, a bunch of decimals here. So how many significant figures can I use? I've got 3 here, 3 here, 3 here. I guess I can only use 3, so I'll say the temperature then, the surface temperature at least, will be equal to, let's see, 996. I can only use this 5. will make this one round up. So I'll say 997. I'll leave the other one as a 0. So there we go. We've solved part A. So surface temperature is going to be around 9,970 uh, 9, Kelvin. Now, if I'm doing any calculations, I want to keep all of my decimals on my calculator, so I'm going to use you know, the, the full version here if I need to. Okay, for part B, I'm using some other data. By the way, I did find this from part A. That's why I just wrote it down again. So for part B, well, we're going to use the luminosity because we want the radius. And again, just to show you again how we do this, we say, well, the luminosity is going to be sigma times a t to the fourth. But we remember that a is the surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. And that's the r we're going to be solving for. So I'm going to start rearranging. I'm going to say L equals 4 pi r squared. I'll just put the a in front, times sigma, times t to the fourth. 
Okay, well, if I want to get r by itself, then well, maybe I'll just start with r squared. I'll do that. So I'll say r squared then equals, well, it's going to be l over 4 pi. So I'll get rid of that one at least. And what else? I'm going to have, oops, my pi looks weird. So 4 pi. I'm also going to divide by sigma, and I'm also going to divide by t to the fourth. And finally, then, if I want uh, r by itself, I'll just do the square root of that. So I'll say r equals, technically it's plus or minus, but we'll just take the positive one. It'll be l over 4 pi times sigma times t to the fourth. I'm just going to do this. So I've got to put in the numbers. So let's go ahead and do those. So I've got r equals, and let's see now, uh, l is going to be, well, 25.4. That's my luminosity, except that's times L of the sun, where L of the sun is 3.85 times 10 to the 26. Okay, that's my top value. Now I've got to get the uh, denominator here. So what's that going to be? It's going to be 4 times pi times, ooh, sigma, which is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. You look that up on your data booklet. And T... Well, I'm going to use as many decimals as I can, but I'll say 9965.6 dot dot dot, all that to the fourth, don't forget. And all this then is square rooted. So although it seems like kind of a mess, whoops, um, we can do this on a calculator. So I'll just get on my calculator and do this. I'm going to save that answer as sort of answer. I'm going to keep this. So I'm going to say, first of all, I want a square root, and then I want a fraction. And then I'm going to say 25.4 times, let's see, 3.85 times 10 to the 26. On the bottom, I'll say 4 times pi, okay, times 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. And all that's going to be, let's see, times, oh, I'll do in brackets, and I'll say answer, and I'll say answer to the power of 4. All right, so there we go. So I get an answer of, ooh, that's a big, big number, isn't it? So let's see, this will be, if I move the decimal over, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so this will be 1.1796, whatever, times 10 to the 9. Okay, well, if I'm only allowed three significant figures for this, then I'll say the radius is approximately equal to, let's see, I'll say 1 point, I'll say 1, and this one here will round up to an 8. So I'll say 1.18 times 10 to the power of 9, and I'll say meters. So this is around uh, around 1.7 times, you know, the radius of the sun, just, just for comparison. So uh, this is seems pretty big, yes, but I mean, it's nearly twice the size of our sun, so it's pretty big. I thought it might be interesting to show you an HR diagram for Sirius, actually. So if you look at this one right here, this is HR diagram, sure, but if you look at it, let's focus in on where Sirius is. Sirius is around here, and if you look at this right here, so let's just say we take this Sirius right here, and we go uh, down here, so we'll just take this right here and go down, 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 down. Do you notice, and we get roughly, let's see, these are the temperatures right here, do you see that we get around 9,000 or so? And what did we get for our answer for the temperature? Hey, we got around like, yeah, 9,000, almost 10,000. And then if we look over here, what else can we tell from Sirius? Well, we can also say over here, let's see, if we go sort of across right here, I'm just trying to go across and not mess it up here. But uh, what's this luminosity right here? Do you see it's between 10 and 100? And we were told here that its luminosity was actually uh, 25 times you know, the luminosity of the sun. So do you notice that what we just found is actually consistent with what this HR diagram shows us? So we can tell, for example, this here is around, you know, around 25-ish, and this is around 9,900. Like, yeah, it seems to fit at least. It seems to be there, and it seems to be around there, sure. Isn't that kind of neat?